And we're joined now by Idaho Senator Mike Crapo, who is home during the August break. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by today. We do appreciate it. We know you're you're a busy individual, lots of things to do. Let's talk a little bit about starting off first. President Trump, in a cam I guess you call it a campaigning style stop the other day in Nevada, mentioned just a one line about if I don't get my wall. I'm shutting Congress down. Now, obviously, he's referring to the budget talks that are currently right. going on right now. Is that even possible? Well, you know, when we've talked about government shutdowns for three or four cycles here, and they aren't really government mm -hmm. shutdowns, it means that we have a battle where we are not able to continue the operational budgeting for everything until we work out all of the differences of opinion. And I think that's what the president's referring to. The reality is that the major operations and the critical operations of government even in those battles, mm -hmm. never shut down. And I don't believe President Trump is talking about that. I think he's talking about being very serious in fighting for the necessary funding for the wall and for other critical priorities that he's talked about, like strengthening our troops and so forth. Uh -huh. And so when we're talking about a wall, he's talking about a physical wall. Are there other ways that we could do the same thing, like a virtual wall or policies, rather than something physical that costs eight billion dollars I believe there are now I'm not one of the experts in this arena but as, as, as you look at a long border like that there are probably ways to deal with and, and essentially build a wall of some sort whether it's a, a, a technological wall or an actual physical wall or what have you and I actually believe President Trump is flexible on that as well I've heard him say things like we'll do it in different ways in different parts of the border so I would think that our experts could help us achieve this objective but the objective of having a complete border protection so that we deal with the illegal crossing of our border mm -hmm. is one that I think there's broad support for in the Republican Party, at least in Congress. Okay. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about the events in Virginia um, last week, a week and a half ago. Um, you came out and after President Trump made his comments, you made some comments uh, about it. And I don't, I don't want to get into the specific comments and the back and forth and stuff, but obviously there needs to be some healing to go on. What as a, as a leader, of not just the Republican Party, but Congress in general, can Congress do to help heal the country? Well, frankly, one of the things that we need to do in Congress is start coming together and getting some results for America. Uh, the, the fact is that people in America are very frustrated with the inability of Congress to actually work together and find solutions. And I think that's a big part of it. Now, there is broad disagreement in this country on what policies we should pursue and how we should go about doing that. But I believe just seeing Congress work will help to achieve those kind of objectives. So kind of setting by example, if we can get along, maybe other people can get along. Yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about when you get back in September and uh, you can reconvene. Obviously, the budget is going to be a big topic. What are some other big topics that Congress is going to be tackling over the next six months to a year? The next six months to a year are going to be huge in terms of, of agenda items. Uh, we face a debt ceiling extension. We face a budget which we must put together. We must do the appropriations to finish the last year's budget. We still have 30 days on the reconciliation bill to do the health care reform, and I'm one of those, and I think most of us in our caucus are committed to trying to get that reform put together, even though we fell one vote short in July. And we are moving forward to initiate and aggressively move into the debate over reforming our tax code. Right now, if you look at our tax code, it's the most unfair, the most complex, the most expensive to comply with, and the most anti-competitive to our business interests in America that we could have created if we tried to. And we've got to fix this tax code. Okay, no small tasks, any of those. Uh, quickly, there is a Gallup poll that said that Congress has a 16% approval rating, 79% disapproval rating. Is that something that you really pay attention to? Because it seems like this has been ongoing for a few years now. Oh yes, this is not new, <laughs> uh, but it is accurate. And frankly, if I were one of the people called on one of those polls, I would be one of the people saying I was unhappy with the way Congress is operating. Uh, that is starting to change, and I think what we can do about it, yes, we pay attention to it. It says what people mm -hmm. are thinking about how we are conducting the business of this nation. I believe that we need to start generating results. If we can do the job, 
achieve the agenda that we are talking about of reducing the regulatory burden, reforming the tax code, reforming our health care system, and moving this government forward, I think people are going get, to start getting more confidence. And, and let me just say one other thing. You know, we just put a justice on the Supreme Court who's one of the best justices I think we could possibly have confirmed. It's those kinds of successes that we need to start adding to the list and that I think will then give people a higher level of confidence in this Congress. Okay, Senator Crapo. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Like I said, thank you for making time, and uh, we know you're very, very busy. Thank